Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we're going to be taking out another fan favorite, the F 94D. This is an aircraft that I usually kept around in my hangar back in the early days as an aircraft to help my friends grind out their tier 10s because it was usually I would think I was at tier 8 or tier 7 with some of my other lines I was grinding. And this is just an absolutely awesome aircraft. Uh, it is a multi-roll, but it's not really a multi-roll. It's more of a, well, let's do this real quick, uh, F2. It's more of a low altitude boom and zoom fighter. It does have some pretty interesting weaponry. It's the only American aircraft with air-to-air -air rockets mounted in those pods doing 400 damage each rocket. And we also have an M61 Vulcan firing at 3,000 rounds a minute and able to pump out over 900 damage a second with the current configuration. We are running gas operated action because we essentially went all in on the overall damage output. Here we go. Oh, he maneuvered on us. There's two Jawas over here. Three Jawas. Oh man, I should have saved some of those air to air rockets. Can I get him? Ah, oh, I got him, but I lost my engine. Somebody's on me. I'm not going to be able to outturn this guy. Well, I might be able to outslow him, which sounds like an interesting proposition, I'm sure. Guns on. Oh, something else is on us, though. It's the Jawas. Ah, ha, ha. Kind of to be expected. I oh, mean, do they actually have three Jawas on their team? Or was I just mistaken? No, they've got a, a W1 and two W2s. That was unexpected. Those are not the aircraft I really want to see, especially early on in the battle. Hopefully Glamdrig will be able to snag the mine for us. Let's head on back in there. Come on, guys. You can get it. It's just one little aircraft. Sweet. Mm. Too many Jawas, man. They are a nasty plane to go up against. I can't believe I wasted my air-to-air -air rockets early on. Usually it only takes a single volley to be able to, to get the job done. There, we got a little bit of engines. There's a human in this bomber aircraft. We've got a lot of firepower and we're very quick. Man, we got him in the zone. I thought we lost this. Rockets will be back up shortly. Bomber, we can make short work of him. There we go. He's worth a lot more points. Okay, let's just get away a little bit. This aircraft is set for... A bit of a balanced build, but we also have the ability to get a bit of speed in the dive with the polish skin. Next target. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. That's what we were hoping for. Jawas are back. Bombers are not going to the right spot. Is he really just hanging out below us? Uh, let's do that. Saw a bomber. <clears throat> Let's uh, hit the boost cooler. That's got to be the 287 over here. No, that's the 287. He's getting engaged. I'm going to be able to take him on. Very confident in that. There we go. Ground attacker. 
This EIL-20 I think we engaged earlier. Yeah. Yep, just picked up the Lambert. We'll defend the bomber flight a little bit. We actually have a really interesting capability, and that is we can actually outpace in a straight run uh, at same altitude. I can outpace the HG-2. And just look at the damage coming out of this thing. Good range on the guns, too. We're in range already. Guns heat up pretty quick, but they also cool off very quick. There's the Horton 229 again. I got my finger on the R key. Okay. And let's burn towards the JU-287. Yeah, look at that. 570, 580, 590 miles an hour in a straight and level flight. And it wasn't even necessary. Our guys are about to pick up the enemy mine. And the bomber flight just made it over to that garrison. Probably gonna have to keep an eye out for the 287 again. Slow and easy on the turns. Line up the shots. Let the guns cool off for a half second. And air supremacy. We locked it in. Ah, that's alright. We can head back over there. We got plenty of time at this point. Pretty much a lock. Let's see here. Oh, let's save our buddy Glam. Mm, nope. Not able. Got that guy's engine. Let's try and get some distance, actually. He's got some range on those guns. But I'm willing to bet it may have added a level of ignorance. Well, arrogance, not ignorance. There we go. Knew I'd see those Horton 229s around again. Oh, the rockets missed. I was really hoping to get a rocketeer this round. I don't think we're going to get the chance here. Let's try something crazy. Ah. Trying to pull a leading shot with rockets isn't easy. Definitely not impossible, though. I've seen some pretty incredible stuff. Whew. Oh. So, we ended up getting Wing Legend, Lambert, McCampbell, as well as Conqueror, and Flying Raider Badge. We're going up against a Horton 229 and a JU-287. Usually, that's a pretty winning combination, even though they weren't coordinating with one another. But I'm willing to bet the Horton 229 it might have picked it up on the recent event that happened last weekend. It might still be getting used to it. Like I said, those guns can be a little bit unwieldy. The JU-287 is a very strong platform, but the heavies were definitely vectored on them the entire time, and any time I saw them, I went for the kill as well. One of the things I kept mentioning was that this aircraft had very good speed. As you can see here, straight and level 590, it wasn't super easy to get up to, but if I was diving, I probably would have been able to get up to those speeds a little bit quicker. But again, if we were to take a look at the tier nine heavy, I said the HG2, I can actually keep up with them. Because at full run, he's able to get up to 594, and this is a specialized platform. Granted, it doesn't have all ultimate gear, but it's going to be pretty much what you'd expect for the most part. That should not be that piece of equipment. Destructed. So, my point is, I wouldn't necessarily be able to beat him in a straight foot race, but... I would be able to maintain chase against him long enough to bring that 
Vulcan to bear against him. And then the F2H we'd easily be able to keep up with. And it's actually fairly comparable to my F6U's top speed with a little bit more of a, of a maneuverability build. But 596 for him in the straightened level while we're 590. And for a multi-roll, that isn't too bad. Like I said, the air-to-air -air rockets, 400 damage per rocket, a total of 8 rockets launched three separate volleys can give you a total cumulative damage of over 10,000. If you want to compare that to the German air-to-air -air rockets, the R4Ms, they're only going to be getting 3,600 cumulative damage. They do reload about twice as fast, but they're still not nearly pumping out the same amount of damage per reload. What this really equates to is this aircraft, typically I'm launching all three rocket volleys at one time with one of my bvps unless they're low health this aircraft i can afford to launch a single volley of air to air rockets granted we didn't get a rocketeer this match and that tweaks me just a little bit come on i just wanted one uh but usually that's the exception the rule is i'm typically getting a rocketeer and the 400 damage per rocket is more than enough to be able to take out a multi-roll or a, I'm going to, you know, talk to him in a second. Uh, I take on a light fighter or another multi-roll. If I'm going up against a heavy or maybe I'm vectoring on a tail chase for a ground attacker, it's going to take a full volley of these rockets and probably still won't be able to kill that target because we have to take into account damage resistance. The forward firing gun is that very unique Vulcan, the M61, which is the basis for the same Vulcan that we actually see in modern day fighters. And like I said, 3,000 rounds a minute, very high rate of fire with a range out to nearly 2,700 feet, about 1,000 meters, give or take. And we're able to get hit reg out to 3,300 feet, which means that I'm a pretty decent interceptor. And like I said, that 262 HG2 might have tried to get into a fall run against me just to get away if it was a human player. But I would be able to maintain chase long enough to be able to get that gun to bear and pumping out 800 damage per second at base and with the gas operated action bumping me up to 908 damage per second with the current setup. I am able to get some serious hurt out on the baddies and this thing isn't going to be winning winning any turn fights like it doesn't have much of a turn capability you're looking at a 13.2 second turn time with the current configuration granted we're losing a little bit by throwing on the polished skin here but anything that has over an 11 second turn time i'm not going to be putting too much effort into the maneuverability it's more or less going to be trying to play to the strengths and for this aircraft it's going to be the overall speed uh, and obviously the multitude of uh, bullets and rockets that you can kick out of this thing. It does get a quote-unquote shiny paint job, which means that it's going to give us a bit of a boost when it comes to the overall cruise speed. Uh, it just only shows the shinies on the wingtips as well as on the tail section. It does get these really cool looking wingtip fuel pods as well, and if I recall... The F-94D Starfire was used as a test bed for a multitude of different weapons configurations, so it does make sense that it would be carrying the Vulcan as a possible payload. If I recall, the grind on this aircraft is a bit tedious, because in order to get these guns, you're going to have to go through uh, two upgrades before you can get to the Vulcan, and it's going to be fairly costly. I do advocate getting the second set of cannons as quickly as you can. They're going to be the same guns that you would find on the F2H as well as the F6U, if I'm not mistaken. And then getting the rocket pods because you're going to want to have those. You're going to need to get used to using them and they're a huge multiplier for those times that you're stuck in a head-on against an aircraft. We didn't get a good example this time. But if you guys check out some of my previous F-94D Starfire videos, you'll see them used to much better effect. I just decided to take this bird out because I was thinking about it. I was scrolling through my, uh, my carousel here and I went, oh yeah, that's right. I haven't flown this bad boy in a while. And it is a very neat aircraft and it's a lot of fun to take out. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the battle as much as I enjoyed flying it. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.